Hi, Rachel. I thought a little video explaining your questions might be better than trying to write it all out. All right, so your first question, question was about um, symmetry. So here was the function you were working with. Uh, a reminder, even odd symmetry is gonna be found by replacing all the x's with negative x's in this given equation. And then after we replace negative x in for all the x's after we clean it up, we're gonna compare the new equation we got with the original equation. And in that comparison, we'll know how to respond to the even odd question. So let me go ahead and take that original equation and everywhere I see x, I'm gonna just plug in negative x. And be careful to place you know, the powers in the correct place. I usually set up a parenthesis wherever I see x so that I can just dump in negative x. Now this negative x over here, you don't do anything. It's just showing that what I did was I replaced all x's with negative x. So now let me come over here and clean this up. Meaning I'm gonna go ahead and do the power first. So negative x times negative x will give us positive x squared. So our numerator actually returns to exactly what the original problem had in its numerator. And likewise here, when we square this, we're gonna to return to an x squared. So now I compare this answer with the original answer. And for even symmetry, if the, if the new equation is exactly like the original equation, then that tells us that we have um, y-axis symmetry, which that means we have an even function. So what we did in the, the video about symmetry is that we said all signs the same. When I say all signs the same, I mean look at every part of this, this new uh, cleaned up answer. <clears throat> and all it looks identical to the original. So all signs, all signs the same mean that we have an even function, which that also just means y-axis symmetry. So for this problem, we would have had an even function. Now let's just say, and that's done and over and everything, but let's just say that, you know, when we cleaned all this up, if all the signs were the opposite, like if this had been negative 4x squared, this had been negative x squared, and this had been a plus, if all the signs were different, then that means we have an odd function. And if neither of those cases were met where all the signs were the same or all the signs were the different, then, then we wouldn't have any even or odd uh, function. We'd have no symmetry. Right, I believe your second question was about how did they get a four-fifths or negative four-fifths from evaluating the function. All right, I think you're talking about the one where the input was negative one-half and maybe positive one-half. So let me go ahead and just plug in negative one-half. It could be a bit tricky with fractions. You, you've got a fraction in the problem, and then you're putting in a fraction for the x. So it's really... Um, you know, careful calculator work, if you will. All right, I might try and do some of the work without a calculator and then, because uh, sometimes the calculator can trip you up. All right, if I do this by hand, I know if I square negative one half first, doing the power first, that's gonna be positive one fourth. So on top, I'm gonna have four times one fourth. And then down here, when I square um, negative one half again, I'm gonna get positive one fourth minus four. All right, I'm gonna keep going without a calculator until I feel like I, I, I need to pick one up. So in the numerator, when I multiply, I'm gonna get four times one fourth is one over. Now down here is where the problem begins. Uh, you could try and do this on your calculator, one fourth minus four. I don't know if the answer will return a decimal um, or if your calculator, depending on the kind you use, will return a fraction. But one fourth minus four over one, I, I would need a, if I'm gonna do this by hand, I'm gonna need a common denominator of four. So I'd multiply this fraction by four over four. So that ends up being one fourth minus, what, 16 over four. Uh, I probably would now, thinking about this problem, go to the calculator, and I think this is gonna give you negative 3.75. So this is one over negative 15 fourths. 
And if I continued without a calculator to clean this up, I would have to multiply by the reciprocal. So um, what we would do here is uh, multiply by negative 4 fifteenths down here. And of course, the top would have to also multiply by negative 4 fifteenths. So this would return to a 1, and our answer would be negative 4 fifteenths. And I think that's what the answer was. Okay, so that was a lot of work without a calculator. You know, maybe I would jump off the by hand right here and notice that I had 1 over, and if I did this on the calculator, I should get negative 3.75. And then I'm, I'm just wondering, depending upon the kind of calculator you have, perhaps you can change this. Um, uh, maybe there's a keystroke or something, a button on the calculator where you can go like from decimal to fraction. Uh, it just depends. There's so many different calculators. But um, for this one right here, you know, if you got to this point and you, and you were using your calculator, uh, then perhaps, perhaps you might want to change this back to a fraction. You know, depending upon what my math lab wants, if they don't accept this right here, then you'd have to change this to a fraction. And just doing that in my head, that's, again, going to be uh, 3.75. I guess I'm going to be back to the negative 15 fourths again. So actually, I end up getting back to the point where I'm still having to do this without a calculator. So those are a bit tricky, I know, with the fractions in the fraction problem. Uh, you just got to kind of have to find your workflow in around, you know, that problem. Anyway, I, I, this was probably a little bit long, but I hope it helped.